the decaying wooden hulk of a once famous ship, abandoned in the mud of a lonely Essex estuary and remembered only in the history books. The untended grave of a once famous aristocrat in a South London churchyard. He too is remembered today as an historical footnote. Both the ship and the aristocrat were once intimately linked. The vessel was the Beagle, a three-masted bark recalled mainly for its famous passenger, the naturalist Charles Darwin, who after the voyage went on to give the world his controversial origin of species. And Robert Fitzroy, who ended his days in Norwood, South London, was the Beagle's 26-year-old captain. It was he who chose to take Darwin, four years his junior, on the voyage. Fitzroy, descended from the illegitimate son of an English king, found himself overshadowed by Darwin's fame. Yet in the decades after joining the Royal Navy at the age of 13, Fitzroy became the MP for Durham, Governor of New Zealand and Conservator of the River Mersey. And Robert Fitzroy had one more role in his crowded and distinguished career which has an historic importance today and which has been of incalculable benefit to generations of sailors and landlubbers. Robert Fitzroy was born in 1805 in the family home in Ampton near Bury St Edmunds. He had an illustrious pedigree. He was a direct descendant of the first Duke of Grafton, the acknowledged illegitimate son of Charles II, resulting from his notorious liaison with Barbara Villiers, the Duchess of Cleveland. His uncle was Lord Castlereagh, a leading politician of the period who, exhausted after working under intense pressure, cut his throat. This had a major impact on Fitzroy, then a 17-year-old midshipman in the Royal Navy, and was to echo eerily decades later in Fitzroy's final days. During his career in the Royal Navy, Robert became aware of the importance of weather. The Beagle arrived in Maldonado Bay after encountering a severe storm at sea known locally as a Pampero. Signs in the sky, barometric evidence and temperature showed what was coming. But want of practical faith in such indications and impatience as a young commander in sight of his admiral's flagship induced disregard and too late an attempt to shorten sail sufficiently. Top masts and jib boom were blown away. The vessel was just saved from founding by cutting away both anchors and letting the cables run out to the clinch, which brought her head to wind and righted. But two fine fellows, blown from aloft, swam hard for their lives, but were immediately overwhelmed by the sea. It opened Fitzroy's eyes to the importance of understanding how the weather worked and learning how to predict its behaviour. He showed his ability to ride such a storm and bring his ship safely to harbour. In 1831, the Beagle left England to continue its surveying work off the South American coast. On board was the young naturalist Charles Darwin. Darwin described Fitzroy as a very extraordinary person. He had never before come across a man he could fancy being a Napoleon or a Nelson. Darwin said that he would not call Fitzroy clever, yet he felt convinced nothing was too great or too high for him. Queen Victoria regularly asked Fitzroy for weather forecasts if she or her family were due to travel across the Solent to a home on the Isle of Wight, and he was rewarded when he was named the first head of the Met Office in 1854. He set up a network of paid agents in UK ports who reported on weather trends. Fitzroy had kept in touch with Darwin and occasionally visited him at his home in Kent, but he was plunged into inner turmoil by the publication in 1859 of Darwin's Origin of Species, which he saw as a false path and a blasphemous theory. Darwin annoyed him when he linked his views to his time on board HMS Beagle, and he lived life in the lengthening shadow of Darwin. But Fitzroy came to realise that despite criticisms of the theory that man was descended from apes, the Darwinian case had been established. Fitzroy plunged himself into his Met Office work. He was nearly 55, had been working long hours since he was 13, and the Darwin theory was the last straw. Fitzroy was also in financial difficulty, largely because of the money he had spent on HMS Beagle over the years. 
but he was a pioneer of weather forecasting and also began the printing of a daily weather forecast in newspapers like the Times. He devised a storm warning system that was the prototype of the daily weather forecast. He also invented a cheap barometer named after him. After 1862, Fitzroy aged visibly, and in 1865, aged 60, he and his wife Maria moved out of London to the quiet suburb of Norwood. Doctors prescribed total rest, and he got leave from the Met Office, but Maria said he fidgeted, wanting to be at his post. He had told friends he would rather wear out than rust out. His wife recorded the tragic events of the weekend later in April 1865 when things became intolerable. He had been planning to go into work on the Sunday and his wife records that he rose at about 7.45am and went to his dressing room kissing daughter Laura on the way. He bolted the door, picked up his razor and cut his throat. Today the Met Office he founded is celebrating its 150th anniversary and in tribute to their founder, the sea area known as Finisterre has been renamed Fitzroy, the only sea area to be named after a person rather than a geographical feature. Biscay, mainly south or southwest, four or five, occasionally six in the west, thundery showers, moderate or good. Fitzroy, 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 Fitzroy. The naval historian George Richards wrote to Fitzroy's widow after his death. He said her husband had opened up great commercial highways for ships with his navigational charts and the weather forecasts. He said Fitzroy's works would be his most enduring monument. They would be handed down to generations yet unborn.